Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Cam Christo and this is the French campaign Path to Modernity and Mayo in Texas 3.0. Thank you ever so very much for joining me. We are making progress. So, scientific methods very nearly able to be embraced. We will not be able to afford it straight out of the gate because of course we just blew all our cash on embracing meritocracy. Very happy to have done that. Crushing our yearly corruption, which is excellent. It's also actually growing in in London, which I didn't realize, that's cool. Um, just checking other stuff. It's, yeah, global trade we've got. Academia shouldn't happen for ages. So it's just global trade, uh, sorry, just um, scientific methods that we're working on. We're going to be amongst the first to embrace it outside of a couple of very small states and, uh, and Italy. So that's good. Let's see here. Um, coring. Is there a reason I'm not coring? I would like the final evangelical idea. ID groups wise, I think we will go for a military one just because of where our ahead of time bonus is at the moment. And I would like my, um, whatchamacallit, my, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> oh yes, my admin points for um, reforms, uh, which we should be, uh, oops, wrong one. We should be still moving towards... Don't need to promote the faction. They're already plenty influential. Oh, the nobility have actually got up there a bit. But I uh, have to imagine the nobility's power is declining. Mm, increasing by very small amounts. Okay. Uh, we are relatively stable, although declining. Yes, because of the big nobility reforms. Okay. And we're back in. So, we've got some Savoyard claims that we could do with getting off Naples. So let's do that. Switzerland, Arboria, Florence, and Fermo shouldn't be a big deal. This is a level one. We will call all our guys, and they will come and help us stomp all over them. I think we got excommunicated, um, but I'm not convinced that really matters for us at the moment because huge lag on opening the paper window there. Um, Pope likes us anyway. Ah, we got unexcommunicated, I guess because the Pope changed. Anywho, we are now at war with the Papal Controller, which is, you know, always an interesting place to be in. Ah, yes, and we had a coalition, but I've restarted the game because um, this is a new new play session. So the coalition has gone away because they don't think they're actually strong enough to take me. You know what, what might be moddable? Maybe I should probably write this down. But, um, who's this? England? England? Has holdings in the Indian Ocean? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. All right, we're going to deal with that in a second. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. The game recalculates when whether AI should be in your... should have certain attitudes towards you, um, like being in a coalition and stuff like that, based on, um, on weird things. Um, so when their ruler dies, it resets. When you restart the game, it resets. And I really feel like it should just be more regular. I know AI decision making is a huge part of what slows down the game, um, but just factoring that into the yearly tick, having the AI recalculate once a year, that seems like that would be nice. Me personally, I would, uh, I would like to see that. So I've been thinking about, you know, I, I know I start a lot of series, not series, episodes talking about this. I've been thinking about what, um, we, we're trying to convert this place, right? Yeah, we're we making headway? Yeah what the next series should be. And I'm tempted to try and do the World Conquest. I know we've only played, <laughs> I've played literally one campaign in 3.0. The thing is, I really want the burger and clergy privileges to be in the game before I do another long campaign. Because this, to me, is the bit of the of MT 3.0 that feels the most incomplete. And now that I say this, I realize that I haven't actually checked recently. Maybe they are in the game. <laughs> Maybe in the more updated version, they're actually already there. But to me, as the religion is also um, a bit unfinished, so there's there's also that. But to me, that's one of the bits that's the most influential that's still missing. Nice new province in Mexico. That's one of the bits that's the most influential is the absence of those. Because um, if they were there, then you'd be um, the fight against the the estates would be much more uh, dynamic. Really, it would be, um, it would feel more impactful. 
Because as it is, you're basically you're just fighting the nobility. The others are kind of pushovers because they don't have the, the privileges that we're giving them the wealth and, and, and all that stuff that you'd expect them to have. And maybe they've balanced for that in other ways. Maybe they've got hidden ways for the other estates to get wealth and things. But uh, yeah. As you can see, my yearly tech ticks are getting pretty long. That was... Uh, it's not too bad, actually. Oh, nice. Our tax is kicked back in. So our income should be... Uh, should get back up there. Um, yes, yeah, so you guys should head over here ready to... Uh, siege down these British holdings that they've been seizing. They've probably been doing these with expeditions, I have to imagine, because the English army is, like, non-existent. What the hell? It's the first AI hegemony I've ever seen in EU4. I'm not joking. They're going to be an economic hegemon. That's what I wanted to be. <laughs> so this is from a mod. I, I, I modded these back in to M&T. And they're able to do this because they're earning just a staggering amount of money, I think. Uh, if we take a look here... Uh, yeah, they're earning a thousand ducats, which is what you need to be able to be the economic hegemon. If I get more income than them, which I know won't happen probably, but if I got more income than them, would that remove this? Would, would I be, be able to become the hegemon? Is that how these work? I've, I, like I say, I've never seen an AI get a hegemony, ever. I've played <laughs> at least a thousand hours of EU4 since these were added. <laughs> they're actually easier to get um, in MNT for the AI because of China, basically. Um... I mean, maybe we'll get this and get the siege ability. I tried to tone down the bonuses because in in um, vanilla it gives admin efficiency, which is way too powerful because it reduces the cost of taxes. So you really, I should probably remove uh, this. I shouldn't really mess with the balance of the level of admin efficiency that it's possible to get. But uh, yeah, the other reason why I'm reluctant to start doing a World Conquest is to do a World Conquest based on how much we've conquered. We haven't been going at breakneck pace, of course, but based on how much we've conquered, we would have it would be it would be tough, right? We'd have to go close to the end of the game, I suspect. And uh, to go close to the end of the game with with this degree of slowdown, if the slowdown is consistent for the rest of the game, like the degree to which it is slower now than it was in 1470 to what it was in 1370, if that carries on, it's not sustainable. Um, we would uh, we would not be able to to play um, to the end of the game because it would just be it would just be it would be painful basically. Um, but I don't know. We could just I could just live with it is one option. <laughs> I could also I should yeah you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna ask the devs if the slowdown tends to be linear. Yeah, I'll see what they say. But anyway, uh, I'm just moving men to England while I'm chatting. By the way, uh, you might be able to guess why. It's because we are. Uh, Gonna take those Indian Ocean colonies off them because we are the only ones allowed to have colonies. Those are the rules. If we were to do a world conquest, and you know me, I love theory crafting. The obvious people to play as, to me, I mean, Castile is one option, to be honest. Um, they have a, a dominant position to take the New World and the Mediterranean. But if we were to do a world conquest, having just done a big kind of colonial game, we probably wouldn't take colonial land early. I think we just yoink it all at the very end. You just you just take the Americas all at once at the end, basically. You take some trade ports, maybe, so you can buy stuff from the Americas. But the options are, I mean, China is an obvious one, and I, and I would like to do another game as China. Um, it's been a long time since our Ming campaign. Many of you many of you probably weren't here for it. We, uh, we ended up getting broken by rebels repeatedly, but still being by far the largest and most powerful nation in the game. Because <laughs> even when literally all separatist rebels enforced their demands, we uh, we were still in a good place. It's uh, state reach time, baby. Uh, yes, I know I take some corruption, but that is all part of the plan. I need to do that twice or so more before we get uh, 100 state reach. I've decided I don't need to siege anything beyond the war goal. Because, um, you know, we'll be fine. Uh, got the papacy done, so let's get an extra stability. And yeah, War With You gets us War With The Papal States, which is not ideal. But it's not the end of the world. Desmond not willing to come in. Um, I will do a colonialism war goal. Which annoyingly... Oh, I'm going to let these guys land. Which annoyingly will not... Um, <clears throat> what do you call it? Um, Bohemia, I don't want to buy knowledge off you. It's, you're going to charge me like 60 ducats a month or something. Eh, 30, that's actually not too bad a deal, but I'm still not going to do it. Um, 
what was I going to say? Yeah, so... I'm pretty sure the Colonialism Morgul will only give me discounts on these two provinces. Um, but still, some some discount on the relevant provinces. Also, it looks like uh, Marina is not giving up their control of their bits of Madagascar too easily. But yeah, playing as playing as China seems like the obvious choice because conquering China, I mean, I mean, oh my god, it was such a chore in uh, the previous previous world conquest. It was it was unbelievably hard. Um, so yeah, we'd probably want to want to go for that. Maybe I should do a world conquest before they add the privileges, just because it's going to be so much harder after they add them. <laughs> Especially, I have to imagine the burger privileges in China are, are a real problem. Let's uh, get our war with England going. I would like to take some of this land from England on the, you know, on the home islands, of course. It would be nice if we could control the British Isles by the end of the campaign, but uh, it's not a priority. The the land border is is far more important to me. Hey, Nipples, I'm not actually interested in fighting this whole war against you. If you just give up what I want you to give up, that'll be grand. And I don't want a too big a coalition, but let's not go crazy here. You're really not willing to do that? I guess I haven't sieged down. They're only level 3 fort in the area, and they have got a lot of forts down in the south, so that's fair enough. And by the way, some people saying they preferred longer episodes. Uh... And I know they weren't, no one said it in a particularly demanding way, but just to explain, um, it's so that we can try and keep up more regularity. I have a backlog of zero episodes right now. Um, so, as you might guess, it means I need to, uh, um, I need to record shorter episodes so that I can make sure I have one to come out every, uh, every Monday, Friday, so that we can, uh, you guys can know when to expect episodes, which people like. And, uh, and I like, I like not feeling like I'm, like, the channel is is inactive and dead. Only maps? How dare they. God, these yearly ticks so long I can pause recording and go and post an argumentative comment on someone Reddit before, <laughs> before I have to tab back in. It's great stuff. Uh, yeah, small pox, who cares? So the downsides of playing as someone like India. They moved the capital to Norfolk. I wonder how the AI p picks capitals, because that's not... I mean, that doesn't seem like a great option. You'd think you'd want it in York, but anyway. Um, the downsides of playing in China, obviously, is that you conquer Europe a lot later, and Europe gets a huge amount of um, progress and benefit from lots of the um, institutions. So thinking through some of these institutions, what would it be difficult to invent in China? They start with legalism, I'm almost sure. Meritocracy they start with, obviously. So commercialism is the challenge, right? Because you need high peasant subsistence and high burger power and high commerce rights. So that's one of the tough ones. But let's say you didn't have this for a while. You know, that's just like Europe not having meritocracy. Well, wait, is that... Can I see... I don't think I can see the penalties on this, but I think it can go up to a 20% penalty, maybe 25 Colombian imports, you can obviously get. You just have to take um, some colonial ideas and then you come at the new world from, from the other side and you get some colonies. So I guess actually if we played China, we probably would colonize. We'd colonize um, Australia and, and, and maybe we could get... We might be able to get to the Incas first. It'd be kind of cool actually to fight over the new world as China, coming at it from a very different perspective and possibly arriving late. Then scientific methods, that's easy, right? You just need to produce... Te you just need to produce... Um, science, you know, um, have edu have scientific industry. That's fine. Global trades, easy, right? Just just build a global empire. That's that's all that is. And then academia, again, pretty easy as long as you get state reach up, which is fine. And then um, I can't click on this one. What the hell? I can't click on nationalism. Well, that's unfortunate. Industrialization, uh, as long as you've got commercialism, no problem, basically. So, ah, I don't like that I can't, can I use left and right? No, that's unfortunate. Can I get it from the map? No, because it doesn't exist yet. And I can't see the things here anyway, right? Hmm, interesting, I wonder why that's happening. Um. But yeah, I don't think the institutions would be too much of a problem anymore because of the system of local invention, which, by the way, is so much better than vanilla. I absolutely love it, by comparison. 
Um, you should be able to invent all the institutions in China, no problem. And you have so much money. Wow, look at that decrease on that, mo that monthly tick processed. Um, do we embrace it expensively so that we can start getting our tech immediately? Yes. Boom. Massive expense. Scientific methods acquired. Is there anywhere where it's really close? 80, 50, 80, 80, 80. No, we'll just take it now. Excellent. And with that, I can take Columbia in exchange with zero penalty. Um, I don't need to take the observation methods. We've got a lot of admin points suddenly, actually. I mean, you know you know what I want to do. You know I want to take, like, Empire Ideas. Or Humanist, even. I don't know why this idea is in here. Like, I, I know the female, the female advisor thing is kind of cool. Um, the, the ability and like, all the events from Women in History DLC are cool. But it's actually worthless. Because they're not any better or worse. I mean, the, the, the event-driven ones are, obviously, but the, the default female advisors are exactly the same. So this doesn't gain you anything, which makes it feel like just a wasted idea slot. Maybe I'll do a mod to change that. The way you could mod that, I suppose, would be to give... make female advisors slightly better somehow, like make their bonuses all, like, 5% better, and you could justify it by saying, like, you know, to rise to the position of advisor in this era as a woman, you had to be... Not just as good, but better than your male counterparts, or something like that. But, I don't know, maybe that would be overpowered. Um, I mean, we could take innovative as well. Piety is not in the game yet, so none of these matter. Mm. Our attrition from battles up 66%. That's kind of insane. Knowledge output is a lot of money. We, we make... Like, how much, how much knowledge are we selling? In, in our capital. It's going to be a bunch, I think. I can see that here, can't I? Yeah. So we're making, like, we're selling 1,900 ducats worth of trade internally in Paris each year, I believe. I'm pretty sure this is yearly, not monthly. That's a lot. So that's 190 ducats extra stuff being created. I mean, obviously not, because you'd increase supply without increasing demand, so the price would drop. But, you know, we'd be able to export a bunch more knowledge. That's quite a lot of cash. But I think I'm going to stick to the plan, keep it simple. We're going to take what we need for a um, an army. So we've got standing army. We will take quantity, because quality sucks, right? I think we looked at yeah, quality, general costs, who cares? Infantry, that's really good. Land maneuver, who cares? Morale, who cares? Morale speed, who cares? Siege ability is good. Artillery combat ability at this stage of the game. Is that any good? And I'm not convinced that it is. Hmm, we're looking at... Oh, well, I mean, we're getting up there. There should be a number here, by the way, which tells you the summary of the... Tells you how many pips there are in each one. That would be handy. Um, but we're looking at 5, 10, 21 pips versus... Eh, about the same for infantry. And then multiplier infantry is way better. Um, so artillery is still... Very, very back of the napkin mental maths. They're like one third as important as infantry at the moment. Um, that obviously changes as, as time goes on. When does artillery shock get buffed? Oh, it doesn't even get that high, but obviously the fire getting increased by um, 0.2 at 37 is, is massive. So not 0.2, just 2 at 37 is, is insane. I think we will take... And then quantity, remind me. Quantity is military... Yeah, right. Military production is crazy because, again, if we look at... Um, production here, military, 1,500 ducats, internal trade here. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Ah, so we can't see, like, our international trade on particular goods. That's... That's strange. That would be really useful intel. But yeah, anyway, we're producing, you know, a lot of military stuff. Just in Paris, we're producing 70. Uh, the extra seven military goods. It makes our armies cheaper and means we can export it for more money. Uh, and also, yeah, manpower recovery speed is great. Manpower training cost is great. Reinforce speed is actually quite handy. So we're going to take quantity ideas. Uh, we might fall a tiny bit behind. I'm going to delay my artillery fire because um, I am going to bang out a few of these right out of the gate. And then we've got a bunch of admins, so we should really be reforming, but I don't think we're very stable. So what I'm actually going to do is spend admin on stabilizing the country by providing grain... This might be really expensive. We're doing non-overseas, though, so we're, it's not like we're going to start feeding all the people in the colonies and things. 
Uh, and that's all we'll do for now. Which gives us two stability, which means... Let's do a little bit of a reform, shall we? We can't because we have recent reforms, which are... Ending... Dum da dum da dum... In one year. Okay, so in one year we will do some more... Reformation. Improve our government. Should be good. But yeah, I mean, the game doesn't run too badly, especially when I remember to actually close things in the background. <laughs> which is always good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the other option is, of course, Turkey. Uh, Turkey, I don't, I don't want to play Castile and France, because, I mean, obviously, France we just played. England, another good World Conquest candidate. You can get France really early, um, especially if you've got Anglo-French Union. But there's a few problems with that. One, we just played France, so the gameplay would be kind of similar. Two, uh, I did an off-camera game as the Anglo-French Union. Not in 3.0, in 2.5. So I don't really want to do that again. Uh, three... We've kind of, yeah, this this bit of Europe is a tiny bit overplayed for me at the moment in, in uh, M&T. We've, we've done this, basically. Not uh, not the smaller nations, but the big nations in this area, we've done. We haven't done Portugal, but you know me. I'm, I don't really, I mean, I quite like starting small and getting big in, in Mayo and Taxes, but what I, what I really enjoy is the kind of, the state building, not the, um, not the empire, but, well, I still like the empire building, but I like the internal stuff. I like being able to focus on the internal stuff rather than necessarily be really pressured by more powerful neighbors. I didn't used to be that way in vanilla. Like I always used to play like playing in Granada and all that stuff. But you know what? Now that I have some extra admin, let's actually call these guys. And this one, war score cost and an extra missionary is pretty nice. Let's go going on conversions. Um, <clears throat> what was I saying? One question for the World Conquest is, should we, like we've got another province there, should we um, turn off my mod um, to add ages? Because it does make the game easier. Not that much easier, I contend, but easier. Um, and I didn't like it when people thought my previous World Conquest was invalid because I was using, I was kind of modding the game to make it, well, A, just run, <laughs> which was kind of not optional. But B, uh, I did mod it in various ways that made it a tiny bit easier. Um, so, but maybe I should just, you know, not care what other people think <laughs> and run mods because the mods make the game more fun. And I put all that effort into actually making the mod. It would be kind of silly to, to not use it, right? Hey, England, are you willing to give up uh, all your overseas territories? Yeah, they are going to cost me these. Oh, damn, and I can't call these ones. Bastards. Because of the, the coring range. This is the problem with expeditions. I'm going to I'm gonna ask the devs about this, actually. What is the, what is the expected player response to things like this? Like, what am I, what am I supposed to do? Because obviously, historically, France should be able to war for these. But oh well, I guess we'll take less land in off England than we had hoped. And instead, maybe we'll take... Ooh, maybe we'll finally take Avignon. <laughs> I should probably have a claim before I do that, though. Um, so, yeah, let's let's start fabricating a claim on Avignon. And then we'll take that. Because it is, it is Provencal, yeah, which uh, we actually don't accept. We should probably start accepting Provencal. Although, I don't know, maybe we want to convert it away. But, uh, yeah. French spreading nicely, by the way. Francian, as you can see. Spread uh, to down a few of these provinces down here, which were, um, uh, whatever it's called, Languedocian, I'm pretty sure, earlier. But, yeah. Um, but maybe we take some provinces from England just to clean up some borders here in this war. People are going to get a little peeved. But I think we're going to do this. And that might end up being the final border with England. Maybe we'll be in a perpetual state of war with... Uh, with England, which would obviously not be ideal, but uh, when I say perpetual state of war, I mean like law-wise, you know, we wouldn't finish taking the island. But it gives us, you know, a proving ground in which to uh, have our men fight. Well, this is with taking Avignon, actually. Yeah, let's do it. It's going to cause some aggressive expansion. Mm. Yeah, let's do it. It means we can start repairing our relations with... Uh, with the Pope immediately. Um, by the way, if you're confused as to why they accepted, despite having an X, it's because that X doesn't update. I hovered and it did show that they were going to accept it, which is why I knew I could click the button. 
There we go. Good. I mean, those are those are those are kind of funny <laughs> British borders, <laughs> even if they're not uh, the most perfect. They could be. They are quite amusing to say the least. I'm going to improve relations with the Pope as well. I did take the land down here as well, didn't I? Yeah, good. So I guess we have to go to war with these guys. Um, we don't have very many men in order to take some more of this coast, so I'm next to the English stuff. Which is, I mean, yeah, it just seems like a silly outcome. Especially in cases like this, where uh, I'm going to call it the North Maldives. I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't say that. Um, are just out of reach forever. We're not going to be able to take them. Well, not forever, because I assume later techs will begin to finally give us some uh, some range. But it just seems kind of crazy that uh, I'm able to send expeditions to Japan, but I'm not able to take land that's right next door. But oh well. All right, and with the end of that war, I'm going to call it part here. Thanks so much for watching. In the next episode, we will take some more Savoyard cores, and I'll see you then. Bye bye.